All right, Pete Gerlach again, continuing um, the second of two videos focusing on family functionality. Um, part one gives you a set of needs that families exist to fill among all their memories, members, adults and kids. Family functionality ranges from high to low or dysfunctionality ranges from a little to extreme. How can you tell, how can you judge the functionality or dysfunctionality of a family? There are many signs. Um, what I want to do in this video to complete the series of two videos is to give you a summary of common signs of family dysfunction. There's lots of variations, um, uh, but together these indicate that the adults who run a family are wounded and unaware and ignorant of some basic vital information. How can you tell if your family of origin or your current family is, quote, significantly dysfunctional? How can you tell? Here are some symptoms to watch for. The very first one and a common one is child abandonment, child neglect, and child abuse. Those are all highly emotional, subjective judgments. Uh, and if there is evidence of any of those, they're all interrelated. That is a strong indicator that the adults in the family, parents, <clears throat> are wounded and unaware. Uh, it's a sign of family dysfunction. Another common sign is if uh, an objective observer of members of the family would say there's not much love that's demonstrated among these people. It doesn't seem like they really care much about each other. They're not very bonded. That's a difficult thing to measure. It's subjective to analyze. But little signs of exchanged genuine as opposed to dutiful love or genuine signs of not really caring about each other. That's a pretty big sign of family dysfunction. An obvious one that makes a lot of headlines is uh, what's lumped into the term domestic violence. That can mean a great deal of lots of different things. But adults fighting with each other, injuring each other, adults injuring children, children injuring children. Violence that causes psychological and or physical damage it's a major sign of family dysfunction. A widespread, almost epidemic sign of family dysfunction is if one or more of the family members are addicted. Your perspective on addiction, there's a lot of misunderstanding about addiction. There are four types of addiction. Can you name them? They all serve the same purpose, called non-organic addictions. Any addiction is, is an individual problem and it is a family problem. The conditions in the family often promote addiction. So it's a sign, any person's addiction, adult or child, is a sign of significant family dysfunction. Another widespread sign, subject to a lot of interpretation, is, quote, mental illness. That's a hugely controversial and misunderstood subject, but if one or more members of a family are judged to be, quote, mentally ill, unquote, that may be, it's not proof, but it may be an indicator of family dysfunction. It can also be an indicator of organic dysfunction. Um, mental illness, in my professional experience of 31 years as a family therapist, often is a surface diagnosis which really indicates psychological wounds and ignorance. Another epidemic indicator of family dysfunction is psychological or legal 
divorce and or spousal slash parental desertion. Either of those common dynamics says this family is not working very well, the members are not filling each other's needs very well, something's wrong. Okay, so divorce and desertion are two indicators. Another <coughs> one that makes tabloid headlines often are family feuds between branches of the same family or between members of the same household. Uh, ongoing fights, disputes, angry uh, actions, uh, family cutoffs where one family member does not speak to another family member for days, months, even years. Strong indicator of family dysfunction. Uh, within that, it indicates that the people who are in dispute do not know how to problem solve and almost certainly are grown wounded children. If you don't know what that means, see the related videos in Lesson 1, Grown Wounded Children. Another strong indicator of major family dysfunction is when one or more children in the family, whether they're biological or step or foster or adopted, one or more of the kids, junior high or teenage, are, quote, troubled, unquote. That can span things like troubled socially, troubled academically, and even ill, unusually chronically ill kids. Those three types of stress relative to minor t kids and teenagers often, not always, often indicates significant family dysfunction. Another issue that may indicate family dysfunction is bankruptcy. That really says that the adults in charge of maintaining and managing the family's assets um, are not making good decisions and or are not able to earn enough income uh, to cover their expenses or are not making wise decisions about their expenses. Those all come from, those are surface indications of adult psychological wounds and ignorance. So major financial problems including bankruptcy is another major indication of family dysfunction. Yet another indication is generically could be lumped as trouble with the law. People who are criminals or involved in criminal activities uh, or who sue each, each other or uh, are, in the, are in jail or are threatened with jail or having court actions against each other or other people, often, not always, often that is an indicator of serious family, not just person, but family dysfunction. The last indicator, which you might not readily assume, is the growing epidemic, at least in America, of obesity. Many people believe that um, significant overweight, including obesity, which is the extreme case, is an indicator of unfinished grief um, and extraordinary inner pain. Eating too much and too often is one way that people, both chemically and psychologically, hide from un unbearable inner pain that may be caused by losses, broken bonds, or childhood trauma that no one has helped the grown wounded child um, safely release. So obesity and in general chronic illness. Obviously that can have organic causes not just psychological. Um, but those two things, obesity and chronic illness, may indicate significant family dysfunction. Here's how they all sound together. Child 
abandonment, abuse, and neglect, domestic violence, any of the four types of addiction, including codependence, mental illness, including uh, various forms of depression, divorce and de desertion, major feuds and relationship cutoffs, troubled kids, including runaways, bankruptcy and other major financial problems, trouble with the law, and obesity, chronic illness, and a pattern of self-neglect in family members. All of those are major indicators of significant family dysfunction. There are other indicators. For the full list, I refer you to two different worksheets in my nonprofit website. One is in Lesson 1. Um, actually, both are in Lesson 1. The first is Traits of a high nurturance or functional family members. What kind of behaviors are common to people who are living in a holistically healthy family? There's a set of identifiable behaviors. The second of two worksheets has to do with traits of people, uh, have to do with family trees in which these, these major signs of dysfunction are common. So take a look at both those worksheets if you want to round out your understanding what are the indicators of major family dysfunction. If you feel that your current family is significantly dysfunctional in your own judgment, there are two things you can do. Assess yourself and other family adults for psychological wounds and take responsibility for reducing yours. See Lesson 1. The second of two things you can do is reduce unawareness and replace it by knowledge. Study Lessons 1 through 6 or 7, if you're a step family, in my nonprofit educational website. Enhance your awareness and your knowledge and get other family members to do the same. If you have questions on any of this, please use my website to contact me. I'm glad to answer questions by email or in person if you choose to do that. <clears throat> Notice how you're feeling right now as you've just absorbed an awful lot of information in a short time. This is the second of two videos focusing on family functionality and dysfunctionality. It's part of a group of videos that all relate to Lesson 5 in my nonprofit website, which is about improving family functions. I hope you find this useful, interesting, practical. Thanks for watching.